Greetings guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monette and this is my channel Evolve with Monette. For those of you that are new here, I am a professional intuitive empath and today we're going to get right into the subject. <laughs> Monique, her son and her daddy. So the Club Shay Shay interview has been literally the gift that has continued to give in every shape, form, and respect. And it has been so fascinating to watch how it has all unfolded because essentially one interview has kept all of the uh, feet <laughs> on our necks. So we have talked about it. But what happened today was that Monique's son uh, came out and gave his own perspective and take on what has been going on between the two of them. And I would suggest you go watch it. You can find it on any T or blog channel being played in full completely. But the thing that I thought was fascinating about it was the full circle moment of it. And what I want you to understand is that Monique for the last several years, over 10 plus, has been petitioning us, the public at large, and petitioning Hollywood and big wigs to run her her things, to pay her her just dues, to do right by her in any shape, form, or respect. She feels like she has been wronged. She feels like it has not been right. She feels like the scales of justice have been completely and utterly imbalanced on her behalf. And because of that, she has waged all-out war to get respected, to get her energy notice to be validated. And so many of us agree that she was right, that she was absolutely right to want to be validated and that they did her wrong. So now that's been completely proven. The receipts are out or in or whatever you want to say, but the receipts are in fact receding and the math is now starting to math. But her son today came out with his own version of his events of the situation between he and his mother. On the Club Shay Shay interview, Shannon said, well, you know, what about you and your kids? You've publicly said this about motherhood and how it didn't suit you to a certain degree. What about you and your kids? Um, is what Club Shay Shay or what Shannon on Club Shay Shay asked. What has been rectified here between you guys? And so, pardon me guys. What has been rectified? between you guys um or what hasn't a little, a little bubbly water always gets me and so what she said is that i pray for healing i pray for the universal opportunity for healing someday i pray that we can make this go away i pray that we can come back together she she said a lot of nice platitudes about it and the son countered and said but this isn't so the reason that we even know about this is because dl hughley who got into a fight with her as well felt very attacked by her and so he kind of advocated for himself and it was like how can you be worried about all of our sweet babies or all of us as a collective of sweet babies when you're not even worried about your own son or children as as the sweet babies in your life and i thought that was really interesting well the son came out today and said essentially he had a written statement and the statement was written, not in a publicist way. You can tell he absolutely sat down at his little laptop and typed this up. But he said it in a way that was very familiar to me. Because when you work with people that have dealt with narcissistic abuse, or with parents that don't receive uh, correction, admonishment, observations about their parenting, or a lover, a friend, anybody that's maybe toxic, even if they're not a full narcissist, but just maybe toxic enough to not hear what you're trying to say, that is a way that we will do that, right, Empaths? We will write it down because we want to get all of our thoughts out. Because sometimes you will feel gaslit or feel not heard. Well, he did that. So that's strike one. I'm like, there is a lot of truth to what this sweet baby of hers is saying. Because his response was almost a PTSD triggered response. Even though he wasn't talking directly to his mother, that is something in a conversation that they've had before where he has felt not validated enough to hear what was being said and to be able to get his mom to hear him fully so he needed to write down his words. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Next up, he talks about how 
they have been estranged he doesn't really seek to have healing he doesn't really necessarily want that she made it really clear that she didn't want to be his mother she gave him things instead of love she didn't include him into the rearing of her child meaning um children meaning she had other children with her daddy which would be Sydney, her husband and manager um and he had made inquiries as to could he call him dad and he said no you cannot so it seems like at every turn monique allowed a man to kind of ostracize her son and maybe it's how she felt maybe she had resentment she definitely says i was busy chasing hollywood i was busy chasing a bag i was busy chasing my fame so i didn't necessarily care about motherhood so she could have her own built-in resentments and then you have a man come in so then you just piggyback off of that and it's all so convenient and it just works out perfectly except for the child who's actually literally scarred now the full circle of this is this he's asking monique for real understanding and real accountability which which is the very thing that Monique is asking for from Hollywood bigwigs, Tyler Perry, Oprah, the studios, Lee Daniels, anybody who she felt wronged her after the rollout of Precious and the subsequent run that she went on with Precious. And I, I saw the parallels in what she was asking of Hollywood versus what her son was asking of her and it immediately clicked for me as a practitioner and a reader and an intuitive empath I thought oh <laughs> Monique the reason you have yet to have received the apologies the retribution the real-time communication and full acknowledgement even though she's gotten a lot of apologies from the breakfast club from Lee Daniels and even from Tyler Perry as we heard on the leaked uh, video recordings the only person is Oprah, and she seems to really want it from Oprah, and I really don't think she's ever going to get it from Oprah because Oprah is pretty stubborn in her own right. Oprah is a fixed sign. She is not going to yield to this, even if she is dead ass wrong. But let me tell you, the reason that she has yet to have resolution, and Monique does not see this, and she has not connected the dots, and she'll never see this video, it's never going to matter, but the reason that she has yet to really like have the resolution that she wants is because there is a facet and an area in her life where she is refusing to take responsibility. You guys get it? She is refusing to take full accountability. She is refusing to make it right. Now in her case, she was like, I would like financial compensation and I'd also like an apology because I lost tens of millions of dollars behind you guys. You know, maybe that could be debated, but in her son's case, her son was like, I don't want your gifts and I don't want your money. I actually, I'm hearing what I need from you is understanding. Like she, he wants understanding. He wants to be heard. He wants to be integrated back into her life is what I heard his higher self say, okay? Even though his lower self, his, his I'm fighting, we in the fight night self was like, no, I don't want anything from you. I just want you to stop the false narrative. No, that sweet baby was hurting. And until Monique can give her sweet baby that she birthed the accountability that she that he is seeking, Monique will not receive fully the accountability from the industry that she is seeking. Same, same, different, different. And so what her son has done is said, here is where this initial pattern this familial pathology comes into play and because you refuse to work it out with me the universe has a way the very universe that he's air quoting the universe that she's speaking to the universal forces that are around us has a way of making us work out things when we refuse to work it out so she gets it on a huge grander scale a bigger lesson same lesson big playing field where she feels absolutely wronged, absolutely slighted, absolutely looked over, absolutely ignored, lied on and betrayed. Guess who else has felt that way? Her son. Her son has felt every one of those emotions absolutely gaslit as to say the experience that I have that you've told me that I also had Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry. Yes, we didn't treat you well. Yes, you didn't cooperate. So we just painted you with a, a wide brush and made it so that everyone in Hollywood thought you were difficult to work with. You guys see how that works? So that is what 
<laughs> that is what was done to her. It's also what she's done to her son. So her son's saying, these are my experiences. Don't you see? Don't you understand? These are my experiences. Can't you just acknowledge that they are? Why was I so excluded, even though I was your only child? And then when you had other children, you gave them a different experience. And I wasn't allowed to be part of that experience. And she says to Hollywood, why was I so excluded, even though I was your star, I was your starlet, and I was slated, and I won the Oscar? Why did you treat me so badly, even though I was right in front of you asking simply for my things? The lesson at hand here is that Monique is devoid of the very compassion that she is wanting to get from the upper echelon, from the elites, from the gatekeepers, you name it. She did not give that compassion to her own progeny. She gave it to no one, really. A lot of self-pity. Now, she's not wrong to feel how she feels. So if you've ever been Monique and ever had maybe your voice stolen or someone to gaslight you and tell you what you know is not the truth, then I'm not coming against Monique in any way regarding that because that's fair and that's really happened to her. But she definitely has gaslit her son according to what he said. Those were his words. He was quite articulate. He was quite clear. He, and it resonated. It resonated with a lot of us that have ever had interpersonal dynamics and problems with family members and or lovers, friends, narcissistic people in our life. It resonated as the truth because it was a truth, a version of a truth. She and her daddy came on to debunk, address, whatever. What I heard was a lot of word salad from Sydney. Go watch the rebuttal video. And I saw Monique, this powerful, vitriolic, passionate woman, shrink in the presence of her daddy. She was not this vocal, outspoken, suck my blah, 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 like she's been telling Tyler and, and Oprah. And again, they have earned that to a degree. They did do wrong things to her. It had not been fair. But with Sydney, her daddy there, he took the lead in a thing that has nothing to do with him. And confirm exactly what that young man said, which is, you're ungrateful for the things we gave you. And he keeps telling them, I don't want your things. Gifts are not my primary love language. Words of affirmation sound like they might be one of his. Also, quality time. And it sounds like he got neither of those from Monique. And while she may have acknowledged it by being like, I was terrible, you're right. <laughs> it's a funny thing to put in the magazine. There's still a son who's hurting, a sweet baby like the millions of sweet babies that she appeals to on a regular basis that wants her validation, her love, and to be in the embrace of her arms. But there seems to be a block. They explain the relationship by saying, well, Sydney has always been your uncle, so it was really hard for us to allow him to switch to calling you daddy. To that, I submit the TikTok adoption uh, world. <laughs> All of the TikTok guys and girls that have adopted kids, and one of one, if you've seen one, you've seen many, and we each have our own favorite adoption family, if you will, right? Like a family that's adopted a child, maybe then they got pregnant after. I'm thinking very specifically of my favorite uh, channel to watch. And so we know that a man who wants to will. And a woman who insists upon a way that her child should be treated will in fact have that need met. If that sweet baby, when he was in fact a young man, was searching for fatherhood and to identify in fathering energy and Uncle Sidney is now Daddy Father Sidney, he could be your Daddy Monique, but how come he couldn't be his father? How come he was denied that very basic desire to be included by calling him that? Sydney said it in the video. I couldn't let him call me that. I'd always been uncle. Sounds to me like Sydney made rules that Monique co-signed and she ostracized her son from inclusion because she was caught up in the limerence, which she clearly still is, of being in subservience and subjugating her will and her own wants to her daddy. So why the hell would her sons matter? I heard a child who wanted to be included and who was purposely excluded with explanations and word salad. And so when Monique says people didn't answer my calls and people blew me off and people told me one thing to my face but then did another, 
I say, Monique, the lesson is full circle. You did the same thing to your son. And you did it without anything. And what she tried to do was this hard-fought victory that she's just earned. These many years that are finally validating to some degree her claims about Hollywood and how they blackballed her. She said, I want you guys to understand that you thought I was crazy when I said X, Y, and Z about Hollywood. And I'm being vindicated now. So understand that you thought I was crazy with them. And... Could it stand to reason that the same would be true with my son? And that way she threw her son under the bus as if to say, stay tuned and watch this space because he is playing in y'all's face and you guys are going to see that we are right. But what I saw was someone who had given up the fight a long time ago and that was Monique. Under the heavy shadow and weight of her daddy, all things become diminished and smaller, including the needs of her son. And instead of advocating for him powerfully and strongly and viscerally from the mama bear space that every woman can possess, but it's not an automatic gift or an automatic upgrade or level up, just because you have a baby doesn't mean you will bond in that way. And clearly there is much to be said about the way that Monique did or didn't bond with her son. She made conscientious choices. And instead of saying, we are a package deal, we are one, she said, it's okay that you can still be Uncle Sydney, even though I'm going to call you daddy. Have your children and they're going to call you daddy. But this child that I birthed that was here before this is an afterthought and a toss away. That is really, really interesting for me that she says that and she seems as though she has no issue with it. She feels vindicated. She allowed her daddy to throw her own biological DNA son under the bus at the beginning of that rebuttal by saying, we can't speak to someone and their mental illnesses. It would seem to a lot of us sweet babies from the outside looking in that have been unfortunately included in this group chat that there is mental illness to be shared amongst the group over there. Sydney, Daddy, and Monique. It's not to say that you're crazy to want to stand up for yourself, Monique. As a black woman, as a big woman, as a dark-skinned black big woman, I know what it is to have stood up for myself in spaces with white faces, with people saying that I accosted them when I only was speaking truth to power and speaking obvious truths at that. I know what it is to be <laughs> CC'd on a memo because even though the boss was black, the people that felt a way about me were white and they just didn't have my back because they couldn't. They would tell me as much. You know how this goes. You know what the politics are. So when you speak truth to power, even though she was speaking against other fellow black people, I know what that is to not look the part because of my big blackness. It doesn't matter how much makeup I have or how many things I wear that sparkle. That's perceived as masculine energy of which I possess. But it means that I was not treated with finesse. I was treated like I better do my damn best and I can say it from my chest and sneak up for myself and who else was going to fight for me? I think to a certain degree it's why Monique shrinks into Sydney because she gets to feel dainty. From the beginning of their little rebuttal, <laughs> Sydney's making mistakes. He's saying things. He said Instagram and she says, Daddy, TikTok. It's demure. It's cute. I observe the body language. She physically makes herself smaller. Because maybe for the first time and the only time in Monique's life, when sitting next to daddy, her world is right. She is treated dainty. She is treated protectively. And she wasn't protected. We know that from her story about being molested and an S aid by family members in her younger days. And what other, other whatever, uh, what other abuse she may have suffered or did suffer. Because I believe her abuse is factually uh, noted that it was it was true. And that's why I think she gives so much of herself away to her daddy, which her son mentioned in his rebuttal to uh, stopping the narrative. He said, I can't relate to needing to lose myself 
so that I can be validated only through another human. And ironically, he's saying that, but he's wanting to be validated through the human he came through. He wants his mother to look at him and say, I choose you. I believe you. I am sorry to you. I owe you more than an apology. I owe you time and retribution and, and maybe no financial compensation because you wouldn't take that from me. But I owe you whatever it is. How can I make this right to you? The very thing that Monique seeks and is seeking karmically is the very thing she refuses to do. Accountability is a hell of a leveler. It is no respecter of persons. In order to get what she wants, she will have to give what she feels she does not have. To the son who to this day says, emotionally, he is down bad. But he's trying to put on the best act. He's trying to have a stiff upper lip. But quip after quip, passive aggressive slight, he get it from a mama and he did it right. I saw someone who wants his mother to shine her heart light onto him without the interruption of daddy speaking. He was the interloper in the third party. And because Monique was so caught up with the freaking, she forgot to do her job as a protector and an intermediary and an intercessor. She forgot to run interference between her masculine energy she birthed and the masculine energy she gives homage to for raising her. She forgot she had mother's work to do and that she has a responsibility to that sweet baby first. I don't care if he's 30 or 10. What I heard were inner child wounds speaking. What I heard were truths weeping and leaking out of his soul. She wants validation. She wants apologies because she says it's taken such a toll. And the universe says, yes, Monique, a toll indeed has been taken. And until you repay in this area, your world will continue to be shaken. She has work to do at 2.22 on this clock. She has work to do to repair. 2.22 is about relationships. There's an angel number there. It's about partnerships. It's about soulmates. Your child can be a soulmate and a karmic one at that. There are lessons that she is running from because Monique is still a brat. There's a great irony to her saying, my daddy had to raise me and course correct me and to teach me how to be. But she looks at the people that rejected whatever toxic behavior she was dishing out as false in the industry. Never intersecting the two that both things in fact can be true that she needed course correcting from daddy and that she may have been difficult to those people in the industry or she may have been exactly what they perceived her to be because after all is not perception reality she perceives that she was slighted her son perceives that he was slighted. Same, same, different, different. The person that is responsible with the onus to fix it, the person that can get the ball rolling where compassion can he truly come in and healing can actually begin is Monique. She wants something from Oprah and Tyler and Lee. As I sit here and speak, she is demanding apologies while provoking and being vitriolic and being what some would call bitter. Did they do her wrong? Absolutely. But God's always the winner. God did. He always had this moment for such a time as this to stand up and vindicate her and say, I see you, sis. But he says, you are now seen. I see you, boo. You are my sweet baby. And there's other work to do. Will you pivot from the bitterness? Will you pivot from the anger? 
Will you put down your sword and open your arms, not to Tyler and not to Lee and not to Oprah or anyone else that did you harm, but to the one and only sweet baby that is dying to be embraced in your arms. That's the message. Monique will not get what she wants until she gives what she thinks she does not have. She does not get to be flippant and say, I didn't want to be a mother. I didn't want to do that. But then be a mother to others with no explanation because she has left that sweet baby with gaping wounds, with unhealed heart chakra, with a tattered root chakra, with a solar plexus that he's trying to piece back together, with a crown chakra that is not fully whole because he cannot compute with his brain and his mind what he does not feel in his soul. And that is loved. She wants to be loved. She wants to be embraced. And maybe someday she will get her way, but she will not do it without having to prostrate on her face in front of her sweet baby and finally say, I really see you. I really hear you. And I understand that to get my way over there, I have to heal this with you. That might not be something she says to her sweet baby, but it will be something she has to do. And you will know, you watching, if she ever actually owns that undeniable truth. Because you will see accolades, apologies, and forgiveness roll in from the people that she wishes to have it from. And without a word being spoken, you will know that the work with her son has been done. Interestingly, she said, we're gonna have this conversation in private and quiet as it should be. Pardon me, Monique? You of speak your truth ever so loudly? You of you disrespected me in public, so apologize in public too. You of Lee Daniels apologize not just to me and my daddy, but to my sons as well, except for you, sweet baby, oldest son, blood of my blood, bone of my bone. She wants a quiet resolution. Let's keep it at home. But Monique has had everything but the biggest megaphone. She has said it out loud. She has said it so proud. She has demanded again and again that everybody circle back and kiss her rear end. But now you want privacy. Now you want it to just be between the two of you, your mentally ill son that you've castigated and outcasted and your daddy so that you can do the demon time work that you want to do so that you can continue to discredit his reality and his perception. And if that is the case, Monique, then get ready for the universe interception. Right now, you're getting your flowers. I see the standing ovation and applause. And you were always going to arrive here because you spoke truths that were a worthy cause. But you will lose all of the ground you've gained if you want to paint your sweet baby as just only insane and act as though the things he said did not ring true when he called out your name. So good sharing energy with you guys. Please leave in the comments what you think. <laughs> Come back and join me next time and we'll continue to evolve together.